Hi guys, welcome back to That Japan Life with Micho. So a few weeks ago, a mom, a fellow foreign mom in Japan, who has seen some of my videos on YouTube, reached out to me via private message. And having just given birth this year, she shared about her struggles and asked for some advice, one mom to another. And at that moment, I was honestly gripped with guilt because this is a topic that I have been wanting to talk about in this humble platform of mine, this YouTube channel. It has been more than a year since I've given birth to my son and during that entire time, we have not left Japan, not even for a day. And it gets easier, I, I tell you that. If you are a new mom, a newer mom than I am, let me say that again, it gets easier. But that first year of being a foreign, clueless, newbie mom in Japan, it was hard, especially the first couple of months. I felt guilty because I remember the countless sleepless nights I spent caught in what seemed like an endless cycle of breastfeeding and diaper changing. I remember that in those nights, I would plead to some unknown force to please somebody who has gone through what I'm going through right now, please just tell me that this is not it. This is not what motherhood is all about. And that unknown force never did send somebody to talk to me. And so I remember promising myself that once things get better, I instead would be that somebody for other moms out there who are going to be going through what I went through. <laughs> and things did get better. They got awesome, actually. Yet I never followed up on that promise. So this video is a love letter to my fellow foreign moms out there in Japan. And especially those who are still in the very challenging first couple of months. I have a very small following in this channel, but I do have moms who comment here and ask questions. And if only one of you is not feeling so good right now, and if I could only make even just one of you feel better, then that would mean the world to me. In this video, I would just like to remind you that yes, it is hard, and yes, it can be bad. It's not all just in your mind. You're not just stressed. You're not just going crazy. It can be bad. I agree with you. I've experienced the bad sides too, but I would like also to remind you that there are good sides and I hope that you get to enjoy them just like I did. So I would like to talk about some good and bad sides to being a foreign mom in Japan. Good. It opens up a whole new world of friendship. The Japanese actually have a term for it, mama tomo or mama tomodachi, and that means moms that you get to befriend because of your baby. You know, between work, personal projects, studying Japanese, and keeping a home, I actually have not made a lot of Japanese friends the first three years that I have lived in Japan. And of course, I expected adding a baby to that equation will not really help my case. But I could not be more wrong. I mean, I'm not saying that I am now in some kind of mother's club. <laughs> but since having my baby, I have added a few contacts to my LINE account. And Yuma, my son, has a regular play date with another baby. And of course, that also means I have a regular chat session with another mom and going to the park is a pleasant experience that I look forward to every single day. Not only because my son enjoys it, but because I got to have friendly chats with other parents. Truth be told, making conversations with strangers does not come as easily to me as it might other people. But when you have a baby, it's just so much easier. First of all, you already have a common topic, your baby. Plus, the youngsters would most probably start like interacting with each other anyway. So the mamas just very naturally get to interact with each other as well. My Japanese is very far from perfect and maybe yours is better. If so, great. You should have no problems chatting others up. Even if you barely speak any Japanese though, this is really a very effortless endeavor. When you go to the park, for example, as soon as other parents see you, their usual reaction is always to greet you with a smile and a friendly konnichiwa. 
So you just have to respond and you already have that connection there. It's also a good idea to pick this habit up and the next time you see another toddler toting mom at the park, then you should also greet them with a smile. That's always a universal sign of goodwill. And then compliment their babies with a kawaii business because heck, all babies are kawaii. Or you could ask how old the baby is. Ikutsu desu ka? And, you know, usually you would find other babies who are the same age as your babies and you already have that connection there. You can talk about whether or not they're going through the same phases as you are. Maybe you have the same complaints with the mom. Or you could compliment with, Oki desu ne, which means like, oh, that's a big baby. Most Japanese moms tend to find this as a compliment. In fact, this is actually a very good opportunity for us as well to improve our Japanese because we can very naturally just follow what the moms are saying to their kids and you know they say the very simplest things and even if you have had some Japanese like education there you would find that there are words that they use with babies that you do not no, that you have not heard before and it's really a good way to improve your Japanese as well. And once you've picked up those words, you could also use them to talk to your son or your daughter and that is also a way to enrich their vocabulary. So it's really a win-win situation and soon enough going to the park would be one of the highlights of your day. Even if talking to other moms is a struggle and you feel like you're being left out while they chatter away and you barely have time to catch up, I would really advise you to do yourself and your baby a favor and make it a point to always go to the park. Because if nothing else, it's very reassuring to see other people who are going through the same things that you are going through. It's very nice to know and actually see that other babies are also going through a phase where they would like put everything in their mouth or that your baby is not the only one who sometimes suddenly throws tantrums and so you know those moms may not be your bffs and you may not have said anything to each other beyond greetings this day but you knowing that they're going through the same things you're going through and seeing that and seeing that they have the same reaction that you do it kind of warms your heart and it, it gives you a feeling that is akin that is close to friendship so yes i would really advise you to go to the park and to make friends with as many mama tomos as you can bad loneliness and helplessness maybe it's not all of us but i think it's a safe bet to say that most of us foreign moms here in japan are far from the rest of our family some probably came for the sole purpose of being with their spouse even so to us feelings of loneliness and homesickness are not really new but this had been made worse because of the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, travel restrictions it brought about. I gave birth in February of 2020, just as the threat of the virus was beginning to grip the world. Lockdowns were imposed, panic was high. Meanwhile, I was a mess of emotions and hormones, having close to no clue about how to care for a baby and continue functioning as an adult and maintain maintaining a household. Early at dawn, I would reluctantly wake up to the wails of my baby and at night, my tired body would be begging me to sleep but my mind would not want me to because I had such an overwhelming feeling of dissatisfaction about how I spent my day. The, the moments I spent with my baby, of course, were precious and they still continue to be precious but especially the first couple of months, it's like my memory of the past 10 hours honestly were just sitting at the sofa breastfeeding literally staring at the clock as every second passes by and you know that's not a good feeling i felt like my days were wasted at the same time i don't know if i've like done enough but i also feel like i did so much and i'm too tired from it 
I, it's hard to explain, but you probably know what I'm talking about. And I know we live in a magical time in history when everyone from every corner of the world is just a phone call away. And I could always reach out and ask for help or even just talk. And I did, and I have a very loving family and great friends who are always there ready to talk to me, support me, give me advice, and just make me feel better. But you and I both know that it's not the same. It's not the same with knowing that you could snooze for 30 more minutes or even an hour because you have your sister or another family member who can readily look after your baby while you're sleeping. It's not the same with looking forward to dinner instead of like worrying about what to buy or what to cook. and you know, looking forward to dinner because maybe your mother is cooking your favorite dish for you. It's not the same with actually having friends like in the same room as you while you're breastfeeding and chatting with you and eating with you. It's not the same. However, we have to accept that that's a reality of being a mom in a foreign land. And I think the world would hopefully soon be rid or you know soon be over covid and maybe you would be more fortunate than i was and you could bring your newborn your brand new baby back to your home country but at the very best that arrangement would only last for a couple of weeks or a couple of months we would have to come back and deal with this ourselves and hope that the support and love and you know advice from our far off families and friends would be enough to sustain us and this is really another reason why i highly recommend like having friends here in japan and you know let's create a community of moms foreign moms supporting each other and helping each other not to feel lonely good the government's got you of course, your opinion might differ from mine depending on what country you're from, but personally, I'm from the Philippines, a still developing country whose healthcare system is not yet as well organized and well funded as Japan's. Mothers and babies here in Japan do get helpful perks from the government, which are not available in my country. To start with, you know, it goes back to the pregnancy stage even. There's that lump sum amount of 400,000, more than 400,000 yen to assist with your hospital fees. And there are like subsidy vouchers for your prenatal checks that even include ones for dental checks. Once your baby is born, the government is also prompt in providing you with the schedule, subsidies, and necessary documentation for his or her vaccines and all of this you can get via mail. They have also made it very easy for us not to miss our baby's developmental checks and in some cases depending on where you live they would even send their own personnel right into your home just to check how your baby's doing in maybe the fourth month and then with the assistance of the company you work for you can very easily process and receive your maternity and child care leave even without leaving your own home and in a schedule that you can trust another thing is once you factor in the child care leave the amount of time a mother can spend caring for her baby while still receiving some financial incentive is so much longer than the one that is available in the philippines so i in the Philippines, um, because of a recent amendment, they can now uh, have up to 105 days of paid maternity leave. But before that, up until 2019, it was only up to 60 days for um, normal deliveries. In Japan, with your company's approval, you could go as long as two years. So that that's a very big difference. And of course, although it's not very high, there's also that child care allowance that parents can receive. These things do add up and I think these are incentives that should be appreciated and th these are things that I'm thankful for. But again, I get that your perception of Japan's financial and medical assistance for babies and new moms would depend on <laughs> the norm where you're from. 
As for me though, I'm just really thankful that um, finding doctors or vaccination fees or receiving my regular maternity and child care leave fees are not things that burdened my time and my mind during the last year that I have been a mom because I know that they sometimes burden the time and the minds of new moms in the Philippines where I come from, unfortunately. Bad. The cultural difference can drive a clueless new mom crazy. I admit, even under normal circumstances, I can be pretty neurotic, maybe even on a daily basis. And maybe that has a lot to do with why I was very anxious as a new mom. But I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one who had a lot of worries and questions during this stage of motherhood. I had absolutely zero knowledge about how to care for a child and so I relied very heavily on the advice of people from back home or of course dear old Google. However, Japan has a way of doing things that are sometimes not in consensus with how the rest of the world operate. When we brought my son back home from the hospital, for example, my mother-in-law came to Tokyo all the way from Osaka and offered to help us out for a couple of days. So she was very kind, she was very helpful, and I, I felt very fortunate and would forever be very thankful for her help. And so that first night back from the hospital, um, she showed us very expertly how to bathe the baby and my husband and I were just standing there looking at how to do it. And while that was ha happening, she asked me to prepare some warm water to give to the baby after the shower. At that moment, all of the information from websites, some magazines and parenting books that I tried to cram into my mind the couple of weeks before going to the hospital, they all came rushing back to my memory. And I know that all of those told me that babies less than six months old should not be given anything other than formula or breast milk. And I even remember something about like giving baby water during the first couple of months, during the first six months can cause some danger to the cells or something like that. And so imagine me fresh from the hospital, still bleeding down there, a mess of hormones, and I'm caught between doing what my mother-in-law asked me to do or telling her, no, you're wrong. You're not supposed to give water to baby. I ended up just just following my mother's request and I, I prepared the warm water. But the entire time my baby was drinking it, I was keeping a close eye on him and I was praying, I hope he does not drink a lot. I hope he drinks very little. And so apparently this is common in Japan, you know, especially like after a warm bath, people would get thirsty and babies are the same as well and they give warm water to the baby after the bath. And then there's this other practice in Japan, which also um, surprised me. If you're eating, please skip this part, and I'm sorry in advance, but so sometimes a newborn would not like poop in like 24 hours, and that, that would cause some worry in parents. It, it's better if they poop at least once in 24 hours, right? And so in Japan, if the baby has not pooped, what they would do is they would like lubricate a cotton swab and then like um, insert it in the anus to kind of, in the baby's anus to kind of like tickle it a little bit. And so that would start the process of pooping. And well, granted, it was actually effective. The baby did poop all the time, but it's not something that I have seen done in the Philippines. And I searched in Google and in other countries, apparently this is also done, but um, usually like with an anal thermometer. Still, it is not advisable, but in Japan, because other parents have also talked about it, you know, like 
when we talk to my husband's friends who also have babies this is a very common thing to do you know so those are just some of the wackier examples but the difference in culture is something that you feel all the time as a foreign mom in Japan. Like when it comes to feeding baby solids, I'm sure that this is a stage most parents are excited about but are also very anxious about. And whereas most of the rest of the world, parents would only be concerned about like general guidelines about when to start feeding the baby, what is not safe to feed baby and you know like methods like baby led weaning or how many times baby should be fed in japan there are volumes and volumes of books detailing about how solids should be introduced to baby and they they take it like very very seriously some of the best selling books i kid you not actually have this schedule it's like a, a planner and it has a schedule of what to feed baby for every meal for every day in a span of 60 days or in a span of a year and the meals themselves all have like at least three components to make sure that all food groups are represented and sometimes they even come with a dessert and you know it's just it's it's a baby who's just starting to eat solids it's crazy for me to think about that and it's very different from what we have in the philippines they even have these websites and these books which are dedicated to the freezing method which is essentially meal prep for babies and then in the books or on websites you'd always find pages and pages of charts detailing exactly when a certain food or should be introduced to baby. So it's like there's a vegetable chart and almost every vegetable, every common vegetable that you could think of is present on the chart. It's like pages and pages of those. It's, it's really something. And then, you know, there's that going to the park. As I've mentioned, I, I love going to the park. But of course, there are off days when I would like nothing more than to just stay home. And I'm sure it's the same for other moms as well, for other parents as well. But in Japan, you get the feeling that if you don't bring your baby to the park every single day or as often as you can you will be viewed as a parent who is lazy and irresponsible and who is not willing to experience some discomfort and that you are in the way of letting your baby grow and develop and learn by going to the park the, that's not just my personal feeling i think because it's it's like an inside joke for the moms that go to the park it's like oh i i did not really want to come to the park today but you know my husband who's working from home urged me to bring the baby to the park or something like well at least it was rainy yesterday so we didn't have to come to the park so i had a rest day so that that's an inside joke for most of the mom i feel like um a lot of them a lot of us feel an obligation to bring our baby to the park and let them play like every single day and that kind of takes the fun out of it and if japanese mothers themselves have this feeling have this attitude towards that what's more for me when it, it's not really something that's very common in the philippine culture heck we don't even have that many parks or that many playgrounds in the philippines and yeah so the, there are differences in the culture that can be difficult shocking <laughs> and you know confusing i admit some of these i still find like frustrating and you know it, it's Still bothers me but I just like to tell myself that this is a learning experience and that you know this is like an immersion into the Japanese culture and I hope maybe that would help you out with the cultural differences as well good everyone and I mean everyone is friendly and kind when they see you with baby 
The Japanese are known for being a respectful, polite, and kind people, and I'm not trying to contradict that, but believe it or not, once they interact with your baby, that level of niceness could go to an even higher level that you probably have not even experienced before. So let me start with the scores of Oji-sans and Oba-sans that are numerous all over the country. The sight of a sleeping or smiling baby <laughs> would always get them excited and you know it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of the road, on the train, or out grocery shopping. They're always ready with a greeting for your baby or a compliment or even just a smile and sometimes they would even be unable to resist the urge to like pinch your baby's cheeks which is a bit scary to be honest uh, during the time of COVID-19 but it's cute and they just they just want to play with the babies and they're just always like very kind and very friendly in the biggest park near where i live there's this group of elderlies who always go out for their walk and daily chat and they they walk around the park and they enjoy the company of the kids so much they enjoy watching and talking to the kids so much some of them have assigned like roles to themselves like there's this kendi oji san and kendi oji san always has a lollipop for every single kid at the park i i haven't given my baby lollipop yet because he's like a little over one year old but every time we go to that park he would always give yuma a lollipop and he would always give every other child a lollipop and the funny thing is with that lollipop plus he always has a candy for the mom as well and he does that every day every day he's at the park and then there's another one this bum kuhen Oji-san. So um, there's this like popular type of pastry. I think it's a cake maybe. I think it's a German cake. I'm not even sure if my pronunciation is correct, but Bam Kuhen. Um, Bam Kuhen Oji-san always goes to the park at 11 a.m. because he waters the plants. But before he waters the plants, he has this white paper bag and inside is like mountains of Bam Kuhen. And before he waters the plants, he distributes Bam Kuhen to all of the kids at the park. Aside from those, they, they really take the time to get to know the names of the children, you know, the characteristics of the children. Like when they see my son, they're always like, oh, there he is again. He's, he's, he's a very strong kid. Like he's always very physically um, active. And that's, that's my son's characteristic. And they also know the characteristic of the other kids. And it is very heartwarming. It's, it's very nice <laughs> that they treat the children that way and aside from the ojisans and obasans everyone in the country are just like very mindful of giving you priority as well if you're a parent if you have to fall in line if you're carrying your um stroller and you're having a hard time pushing it they're always ready to help or like giving you priority in using the elevator those things add up and they kind of make your life easier and more convenient i i guess the babies also light up their days so they're always ready to give the favor back there are like these very serious looking salary men on the train and i don't know it happens a lot of times but when they think that you're not looking they would always take the time to like play peekaboo with your baby and I, I think it's cute. I think it's nice. So yeah, people in Japan are uber friendly and kind when they see babies. Bad. The language. If you are an expert Japanese speaker, well, kudos to you. But the reality is most of us are not. I have an N2 certification and can understand Japanese well enough to follow most daily conversations. Before I had my baby, I've really did not have much motivation to like study in Japanese anymore because I felt that this level was good enough for me to have a comfortable life in Japan. Heck, I thought to myself, I know people who have been living here for years and know 
nothing more than konnichiwa and arigato and they seem to be living just fine so why should i give the effort but when you have a baby it's it's different there are government documents you need to process you know vaccination appointments you need to keep track of product labels you have to scrutinize and you know many many other situations of course if your spouse is japanese you could always ask for help and yeah in some aspects of life in japan there are also some english assistance that you can find but always relying on others is not a nice feeling a few months ago my baby needed an ambulance and good thing my husband was home but i kept thinking what if he wasn't home like would i be able to sufficiently explain to the doctor the nature of my son's illness or would i be able to convey via phone call just how urgent our situation is i kept thinking about that and it, it was a really bad feeling knowing that i could have put my son's life or safety in jeopardy because i did not have the necessary lang language skills living in a country whose main language is not something that you grew up speaking will always be difficult but whereas before most of us would just consider it an inconvenience when you're a mom there's always that feeling of dread that this inability of yours would somehow cause a disadvantage to your child as well so yeah the language is still a very hard very difficult turtle when you are a parent in japan some final thoughts the very first video i ever uploaded on youtube was about what to do if you are a foreign mom pregnant in japan and so the very reason why i started this channel was because i felt like there wasn't sufficient information and there wasn't a welcoming community for clueless foreign new moms like myself and i wanted to fill that gap i still strive to create content with that in mind and so i hope that this video has reminded other foreign moms in japan out there that um you could always find someone to talk to and if nothing else you could talk to me um send me a message or write it in the comments and maybe from there we can create a community with other moms as well you know there are uh, sometimes i notice moms commenting and other moms answering their comments and that's very nice and also i hope that this video reminded you that there are always two sides to everything and um it always pays to try to look at the bright side thank you so much for watching this video and if you liked it to give me a thumbs up and if you haven't yet please subscribe to my channel bye